Hey, what's up guys, Jeremy here. Welcome to module 10 of this RoboDK professional training. If your goal is to create complex robot paths using our software, this might be the single most important module. What I mean by complex robot paths, or what I might also refer to as advanced robot paths, are all the paths that require you to follow, let's say, the edge of a part, a curved surface, or any specific trajectory with your tool. You can think of applications like welding, gluing, polishing, or cutting. Those kinds of paths are almost impossible, or at least very difficult and time-consuming to program using only the Teach Pendant. It can also include programs that are relatively simple, but would take forever to program because of the sheer number of points required. So for this module, I will show you how to use the first of these advanced tools, the Curve Follow project. As the name suggests, this feature will help you follow a curve path with the tool. Let's take a look. Before jumping into RoboDK, let's take a look at a real project done by one of our partner, Kane Robotics in the US. So here you have a setup using a UR robot, um, a jig, a propeller plane, and a rotative uh, polishing tool. So the goal here was to do a mirror surface finish on a blade propeller plane so that it can be exposed in a museum and it looks like super cool. Uh, for that to happen, you need to use a rotative tool, obviously, and create a uh, some linear and some linear paths directly on the surface, and make sure that the tool is always normal to the surface. So to do that, they created the path directly in RoboDK here, as you can see. They optimized it, make sure there was no singularity, no joint limits, no reach limits uh, in in the way, and then they exported the path as a script file here for the UR, but it can work with any other robot brands and then they upload it directly onto the robot controller. And here's the actual result. So you can see here that the robot is following exactly the path that was uh, designed and programmed in RoboDK. So in here, you can see that the, the propeller blade isn't a flat surface. It's more like a curved surface like this to kind of be able to follow uh, or to improve aerodynamic. Uh, so here you needed to have the robot kind of following that specific surface. So the curve follow project will help you do that. Um, you have to use a specific way to import the path. We will talk about path importation in the next um, module. So, okay, go back to RoboDK. So as usual, you will have the files to follow along this mo training module. So in this case here, 10 advanced path generation part one. If you go down in the description, you will find a link that will bring you to uh, here, robodk.com slash files slash training. Uh, and you will find module 10 as soon as I'm done recording it and uh, editing and everything. I will add the files related to the next module. So here you have six modules because our, this is kind of the first batch I recorded. Uh, so you'll be able to go and grab the files directly from here. Great. So. Let's open here the first example I have. So I have a few examples uh, for you. If I bring this one here, so 10A finding dispensing, this is a simple example where I'm using um, uh, an oil pan. Here you can see there's a groove and the goal would be to apply some sealant in the groove around the oil pan. So if I start the dispensing here, you can see that we have that we are following the path. So that might be a bit quick for nothing. So I'm gonna just slow that down a bit. And we are releasing some uh, sealant, or in fact, we're simulating re the release of sealant to see when we are activating and deactivating uh, the tool. So in this case, it's just a 2D example, but it gives you a good idea of how, um, of what kind of path you can do. So you can do it for a 2D, 2D path and you can do it for a 3D path, obviously. So uh, if I was to reopen this uh, here, you would see we also have 10B UR car hood sending and polishing. So if I bring that here, uh, we have two robots. So if I start the main program, so those two robots will go up uh, to their uh, starting position and then it will try to start standing this, uh, this part. Okay. So the goal here is to send the top of that car hood. Um, I showcased two different strategies to do that. So one up and down strategy and one side to side. I would recommend using the up and down strategy. Uh, in this case, it would give you a better result. Um, 
Oh, I had a small footage in here that I didn't expect here. I might have to change a small uh, timer. Not a big deal here. Just make sure to synchronize, synchronize stuff. Um, here to create that path here, we used um, one of me one method that we call uh, CAD plugin. So we we support a bunch of really like commonly used CAD software where you can draw any 2D or 3D sketch and then import that 2D or 3D sketch into RoboDK so that RoboDK can convert that to uh, a robot path. So if you are uh, good with a or just at least knowledgeable a bit with a CAD software, you can do miracle with that. You can, in this case, we created a 2D sketch on top of the surface here with Solid Edge. We uh, projected that 2D sketch onto the surface that created um, a 3D sketch. We took that 3D sketch and we bring it to RoboDK and we were uh, done just that way. So that's very cool. Um, advanced path tools are not limited to the curve follow project. So I told you that in this module, we will cover the, the curve follow project. So this is one of four main uh, advanced path uh, tools. The main difference between the different advanced path tools are uh, what kind of input you are giving to RoboDK. So for a curve follow project, obviously you are providing curves or like a bunch of points uh, linked together. But if you go to utilities, you will see that we have robot machining project, curve follow project, point follow project, and 3D printing project. So the difference here is like for the robot machining project, what RoboDK expect, expects is um, an NC file. So some kind of G code that would generally come out of um, a CAM software. So computer aided uh, manufacturing software. So something like Katia or uh, something like Mastercam, something like that. Fusion can do that. Um, here we have the curve follow project. You have the point follow project. So in this case here, instead of providing curves, uh, which are just a bunch of points kind of linked together, you will provide simply the points. So that can be super useful if you're doing drilling process where you need to go to one point and then you do an action, another point you do an action, or let's say inspection, you go to a point, take a picture, go to another point, take a picture. And then you have the 3D printing project, which also requires you to provide some sort of G-code. Generally, uh, it comes out of a slide, what we call a slicer. So something that can take your 3D object and slice it in layers uh, that the project can print. So, and the only real difference with a like robot machining project is this one will have another information, let's say, which is the extrusion speed so that the, the robot or the extruder knows uh, how much material it needs to deposit or to what kind of flow you need to have uh, to create the object you're trying to create. And yes, and the point here is that those four um, features are pretty similar apart from what kind of input you're giving. So if you are planning on doing 3D printing or if you're planning on doing machining, I, will, I would highly recommend you to follow this first module here, even if the goal here is just to do some curve following project. Because the point is with curve following project, curve follow project, sorry, we can create simpler or very simple example where we cover each point one by one. And this way, this will improve your general knowledge, I would say, of uh, the feature. So that's pretty much for this video. In the next one, we will open our first uh, example, which will be a small dispensing example, either using a Metaman or a UR robot. And we will see how, what, what's inside the Curve Follower project, what are the parts, and how we can start playing with it. I hope to see you there. In any case, have a great day, guys.